Welcome to another episode of EOMS Hunting South Africa, except we are not in South Africa, we are actually in the US. Um, interesting story, we're on the way to the uh, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge in Utah, and I decided, well, while I'm in the US, I might as well um, go visit FX USA. So I popped into FX USA in Wilmington, North Carolina, and John, who's actually on camera right now, said to me, hey Matt, we've got a, a farmer about an hour away from Wilmington who has uh, pecan fields, and they're having a, a problem with squirrels that just come out here and absolutely demolish the pecans. So we've come out here with the FX Impact and I've put a, the, one of the 22 caliber slug liners on here so we can shoot some of those 23 grand Nielsen slugs, put a Night Force SHV on top so we well kitted out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out, we're gonna walk around in these uh, pecan fields around us here where we've got all these trees growing and we're gonna see if we can get a few squirrels. Let's get straight out and see what we can do. We have one of the Smooth Twist X slug liners in this gun today. We've got a 22 caliber slug liner and we're going to be using the Nielsen Specialty Ammo 23 grain slug. So um, this is actually the first time I'll be shooting squirrels with the slugs. I'm very interested to see uh, how or if they expand. Um, they, they do have hollow points. Hollow points are quite small, but we'll see how they actually perform today. I know from an accuracy point of view, they are shooting very well but as far as terminal performance goes, this is going to be kind of a, a, a new experience for us. So we'll see how we go. But the weather's beautiful. There's uh, pretty much no wind right now. So you may actually see some long shots. Hopefully we'll get all those shots on camera. But let's see how we go. I'm looking forward to it. Our hunt begins as we head towards some of the storage sheds and start to look around the large trees where the squirrels nest. The farmer informs us that the squirrels are often seen dashing across to the pecan trees and collecting nuts before dashing back across the grass to their nesting trees. And we're hoping to catch them red-handed, but they are smart little creatures and it's not an easy task. There's a squirrel in this tree. I saw him run out. But it's difficult because they just, they just scurry around to the opposite side of the tree and not easy to get a shot on them. Finally though, we spot a squirrel out in the open about 65 meters away, and I make the opportunity count. Oh no. Yeah. Got him. Right, so, first squirrel down, and I'm happy with that. I'm seeing blood coming out of his mouth and out of his eyes. Uh, shot went, looks like, just behind the, the eye there, so perfect headshot. Yeah, put him down pretty much instantly, so it's a really good start to the day. Happy to get the first one down, but we've got a lot more work to do and we've seen quite a few. So we're going to keep on moving, cover more ground, and hopefully we'll get a few more down. But really happy, but get a squirrel in the head um, from about, what is that, 60, 65 meters is, is quite something for, uh, you know, such a small caliber air gun and such a small target, but I'm really happy. So let's keep moving. So one of the problems with these uh, squirrels is um, we had electricity run to this old barn and um, the squirrels will go inside of it and they'll chew on the uh, on the wires and uh, it can burn the barn down possibly. So we, we've had to kill the electricity so it wouldn't uh, so that wouldn't happen. So just kind of one of the problems with over squirrel population. With the first squirrel down, we decide to move on to a different spot and head through the plantation. We're not really expecting to see much here because it's the wrong time of the year. The pecans haven't really started growing yet, but we are hoping to spot some activity close to the edge of the tree line. So we're standing in what can be a, squ a squirrel hot spot right now in certain times of the year. Um, we are kind of here slightly wrong time of the year. The, the pecans aren't actually out in the trees or they're not fully formed in the trees right now so the squirrels have enough natural food uh, in these woods behind us here they don't necessarily want to come out because there's not that much to feed on right now if we'd come at a different time of the year when the pecans were actually growing properly the squirrels would be all over the place so we've actually kind of had to try and lure them out of out of the trees by by putting some pecans down on the ground and stuff to try to get them to come out but if we'd come a different time of the year they, they'd be all over the place so just because we haven't shot many uh, right now, it doesn't mean that they're not around. They're all in there. Um, we just have to try to get them to come out so we can shoot a few. 
we decide to head into the woods to see if we can take the fight to the squirrels instead of trying to lure them to us and we're rewarded pretty soon as we spot a squirrel in the tree above us. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how good of a shot that was because I didn't, I didn't have time to adjust my parallax. I just put the crosser on him, pulled the trigger, but it sounded so solid that if he's not completely dead right now, then I would be very amazed. <laughs> it hit him so hard that's like definitely expanded by the sounds of things. So uh, it might be tough to find him. He's in the thick stuff, but uh, let's take a, take a walk and see if we can retrieve him from the bush. I'm used to walking through bushes and stuff, but this is, this is very thick. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> ah, here he is. Ah, ah in the thorns. Ah, the effort we go through to retrieve squirrels. And yeah, he had been hit hard, right in the head. Perfect shot. Really happy with that. That was a offhand shot. I'm guessing about 35, 40 meters. Um, yeah, hit him quite hard, fell straight down. And I'd have to say the retrieval is probably the, the most difficult part of that, but glad we got him. We've seen a lot of squirrel nests up in the trees, so we know they're around, but you know how it is with squirrels. When you're out in thick vegetation like this, um, it doesn't help just to know their nests around. If the squirrels are in the nest, you don't want to risk like shooting into the nest. You could just injure it and it could be stuck up there injured. We don't want to do that. We want to hunt ethically. Um, but you know, squirrels could be sitting watching us right now and we'll never know it. This vegetation is just too thick. Our only, only way to spot them really is if they move. It's easier to spot movement than to spot a still squirrel. So I suppose we just have to hope that uh, they actually move around and walk around. If they do that, I'm sure we'll spot them, but it's tricky. But hopefully we get one more. With no more luck in the thick stuff, we head back towards the storage sheds. And sure enough, there's a squirrel on the ground. He makes a break for it before we can set up, but he stops again about 50 or 60 meters away. And I feed him some lead. Take a shot. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about these slugs is the trajectory is so flat. It's flatter than any other pellet shooting at any other caliber. So I didn't even have to range that guy. He's probably about 50, 55 meters, but I just held on his head knowing that it's a bit further than what I think it is. It'll drop down just a little bit and I'll get a net shot for a vital shot. So just um, aimed on the head, took the shot and he dropped straight down. So let's walk a bit closer, make sure that uh, We'll just check where the shot placement is, but I'm so happy that's three squirrels down, uh, two on the ground, but fairly long shots on the ground, and one up in the trees that I had to shoot quickly. So it's a nice like combination of different styles of hunting, and I'm really happy. Yeah, in the neck. So it would have dropped uh, maybe two centimeters down from where I was aiming. At that distance, that's quite impressive. Uh, I'm guessing that's about Mm, 50, 55 meters, so really happy with that. Good stuff. We're about to call it a day here, no, but as we get back to the house, we spot one more squirrel up in the tree and take a shot from quite a long way off. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> well, it's probably 70 meters. <laughs> right by the house here, but it's another squirrel, so it's a job well done. <laughs> it's a sneaky little guy. So there you go, squirrel number four. I think we'll probably call it a day now, but it's been a fantastic morning. Um, yeah, I managed to do a little bit of everything and 
and uh, make a small dent in the population maybe not make a huge difference i think if we, if we come out here in like october november when the when the pecans are really growing nicely on the trees we would have seen a heck of a lot more but yeah job well done i'm really happy and it's another thing i can kind of tick off my list squirrel hunting in north america so really happy with that the impact is is probably my well definitely my favorite air gun and um it's one of those guns that you you love it more and more the more you shoot with it and the more you get used to it and the possibilities are endless with all the adjustable power and stuff um it's nice to to be able to come out to you know another part of the world pick up an impact that you've never shot before and to be able to set it up exactly the same as my impact back at home so there's real there's really no difference in the way that this gun shoots as opposed to my gun at home so that's a real advantage of having a gun that you can adjust so much um but yeah hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on these slug liners soon and put them in your impact and set the gun up to shoot them and yeah it's a really cool experience so hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next video which will probably be the rocky mountain air gun challenge it'll be my first time in utah but I'm really keen to kind of head out there, meet up with some, some old friends there and, and take part in a competition that uh, it's, a, you know, it's the first time any of us are going to be out there. It's the first year that they're doing that competition. So it'll be new for me, just as it is for everyone else, but I'll be covering the event so that those of you who couldn't make it this year can see what it's about and hopefully meet me there next year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.